Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do, because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. What gets you up in the morning? What drives your decisions? What do you stand for? No idea, not even sure where to start. I use my values to guide my life and career. It's the basis of how I've built boundaries for myself and stuck to them. Are you ready to dig into what matters to you? Go to thecatchgroup.com to download your free values worksheet. That's thecatchgroup.com to download your free values worksheet to get to your core values and take action on what matters most. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. In this week's episode, we are continuing our Values First book club series. If you haven't listened to last week's episode yet, that is a great place to start. In this podcast series, we'll highlight a section of the Values First framework every week. Think of this series as a nudge for you to start or revisit your values-based learning journey. I'm highlighting my favorite and most powerful sections of the Values First framework. I was inspired by a company that I'm partnering with to build a book club discussion guide for my book, Values First, and this podcast series is a great counterpart to go along with it. So I really hope that you can grab your copy of Values First. You can do that on Amazon or at your favorite independent bookstore. You can grab it on Audible, however you like to listen to or read books. And then I want you to be re-inspired by this content and follow along and do some of these exercises that I know you will get value in. The book club discussion guide is another really great tool that we've built for you to use as well. And it has multiple questions for each section of the Values First framework. I really hope that you can use the book club discussion guide to talk to your team, talk to a colleague, talk to a mentor, your manager, a group of people inside or outside of work about some of the content in this book. Do this together. Remember the Values First framework spells out the word values. So it is super easy to remember. The V is for values first. The A is for audit time. The L is for life boundaries. The U is for uplifting others. And the E is for experiencing conflict. The S is for sustaining values. So last week we started with the first section, which is values first, where you dig in and understand what your core values are, right? You clarify them. And in this week's episode, we are focusing on the second section of the framework, the A, audit time. After you've identified your core value, now the fun part comes in. Where do your values show up in your life? Have you ever found that after you learn something new, that you see it all the time after that? Let me give you an example. I remember years ago, I had started working at Frito-Lay corporate headquarters and I was onboarding and they were teaching us about how the trucks delivered the product, you know, all the different kinds of chips from the plants to the stores. And they showed us a few different types of trucks that made those deliveries. And after that, I saw those trucks everywhere on the road when I was driving in the store parking lot where I was shopping at the gas station. How had I never noticed them before? They were there all along, but now I had a reason to know about them and I couldn't stop seeing them everywhere. So I am a big nerd and I had a feeling that there was a name for this, you know, the idea of learning something new and then seeing it everywhere. And guess what? There is a name for it. 
It is called the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon, also called the frequency illusion. It is a cognitive bias that affects how we think and process information. So basically it's where you see something recently or you learn something new recently and it seems to appear everywhere, making it feel like it's more common than it actually is. In my case, I wasn't seeing more Frito-Lay trucks. They had been there all the time. But what happens when you've identified your core values? Will you see them more too? Once you've identified your values, you'll start seeing them in different parts of your life and in ways you wouldn't have expected. However, I do not want this just to be a frequency illusion. I actually want you to think about your values more frequently. No illusion here. I want you to be more intentional with your core values, and I want you to go beyond just clarifying them. I want you to audit time. I want you to specifically understand where they come up, which core values are you living, and what does that look like? Which ones aren't showing up as much? Why is that? There are multiple tools in the audit time section to help you answer these questions and to dive in even more to increase the frequency of utilizing your core values now that you've identified them. I'm going to highlight one tool from the audit time section of the Values First framework that I like to use every 90 days. It's called the Values Check-In. Remember, your values are an evolution, so check in on your core values often. See how you're feeling about them and where they're showing up in your life with this simple exercise. We're going to now listen to a chapter from the Values First audiobook from the audit time section called Values Check-In. I love this chapter as it highlights this simple tool with an example from when one of my clients used it. Let's take a listen. Values Check-In. One way to make big decisions is to check in with your values. Once you've identified your values and defined what living them looks like, you can understand where and how your values show up. Do they show up only on the weekends or only once in a blue moon after everything else gets done? You may not have the luxury of setting your own schedule day after day, but how are you spending the time you do have control of? An exercise called the values check-in has helped my clients pinpoint where their core values play out in their everyday lives. The values check-in consists of two questions that examine each of your values. One, where does the value show up in my life? Two, how do I feel about it? For example, two of my values are growth and development. So I would ask myself, where does growth show up in my life? My professional growth shows up when I'm leading a new project at work. You know those projects that seem overwhelming at first? with a lot of competing deadlines and numerous people to communicate with, I learn the most through critical experiences, and that value shows up at work. Where does my value of development show up in my life? It shows up in my coaching engagements with women leaders. I love to be able to see growth in others and help them find insights to solve problems and reach their goals. That's fulfilling for me. A tangible example of how that value shows up in my day-to-day life is through meetings with leaders that I coach. Now for the second question, how do I feel about it? For the value of growth, I feel great when I have new challenging projects that I'm working on. It feels not so great if I'm at a point where I don't see that value showing up at work. I feel bored or restless somehow. For the value of development, if I'm spending more of my time coaching leaders, then I'm feeling great about meeting that value. No judgment on what your answers are. If you don't feel great about a core value, it is an indicator that you have some work to do to live that value. It is a gap that needs to be filled. The goal is to get an understanding of where you are, a values baseline per se. At the end of this exercise, you should have clarity on where your values do and do not show up in your life and how you feel about it. It shouldn't be a surprise that if you don't see where that value shows up in your life, you may have neutral or negative feelings. If you can't figure out where a value shows up in your life, you may not be focusing on it right now, or maybe you just lost the opportunity to have it in your life. Have a conversation with a trusted friend or family member. Ask them where they see you living this value. They may have an outside perspective that triggers this for you. 
Additional points of reflection can also be helpful to consider. What if you have identified where it shows up and you have neutral or negative feelings about it? What could that mean? When was the last time you felt connected to this value? What is a positive experience when you think of that value? Review your answers holistically. How does the bigger picture feel? Is it made up of positive feelings? Negative? A mix? Is there one value that resonates with you most, for better or worse? Are there values at this point that don't resonate with you as much? Is it because you're not doing well with them right now? Are they not a priority for you at this season of life? Or is it not a core value? Focus on the insights that you can take from your reflection. One time in my mid-career, after my conversation with Mark, I did this exercise for myself. For my values of growth and achievement, I couldn't find a place where they were showing up in my life. And I didn't feel good about it. For development, I was actively developing my team and I felt good about that. But that was outweighed by the gap I felt in not living out my values of growth and achievement. By staying in that role, I was compromising my own values. By compromising my values, I was compromising my and my family's happiness, my fulfillment. I was also compromising my value to the world. What parts of your life are you compromising by not living your values? What are the impacts of that? Women often compromise their values because society tells them what it means to be successful. That is why it is so important to check in with your values when making big decisions. My client, Mackenzie, was a great example of that. Mackenzie was a senior executive in a multi-billion dollar health and wellness company. Through her career, she had worked at smaller mid-sized companies. The company she worked for was one of those until they were acquired and were now part of a bigger corporation. When I started working with Mackenzie, she knew she wanted to advance her career, but she wanted to first build a new long-term strategy at her current company. One of her core values was influence. Upon reflection, when she was living her value of influence, she had a direct connection to the decision makers of the organization, the CEO and the board. Her value of connection was also important to her, building long-term relationships and providing long-term value to clients. Company culture was also very important to her to meet this value. She was contacted by a recruiter to join a mid-sized company as a senior executive. In this role, McKenzie would be building a new function, which was a strategic priority for the board and CEO. She knew she would thrive in the culture, which was forged on building relationships, working hard, and celebrating success. It was part of the organization's DNA. But in the end, she ended up turning down the job because it was a lateral move and not a promotion. Plus, she still had things she wanted to accomplish in her role at her current company. Mackenzie is a member of my coaching program, and later she identified her values and defined what they meant for her. Then she audited her time. Was she living her values of influence and connection? Reflecting on her calendar, she realized she spent most of her time in cross-functional meetings within her big company. In these meetings, it felt like a struggle to influence with impact. Even though she had a lot to contribute, she found that she couldn't influence the way she wanted to. She didn't feel like she was able to influence or build relationships. She wasn't living her values at work. This realization led her to think through what she really wanted to accomplish in this role. It also left her questioning why she turned down the other job offer. Did she really care about the bigger job title? Or is that an external objection that she thought she would receive? The story going through her head was that of other people's reactions to her taking a lateral position at a company that was smaller in size. She questioned this external objection because achievement was not one of her core values. Why did that matter to her? She took the weekend to think through what she really wanted and how she could fully live her values and contribute the way she wanted to in an organization that she would thrive in. The following week, she called the recruiter back to talk about the position she had previously declined. Mackenzie had built a relationship with the recruiting team and had left the option open to talk again in the future if they could find another opportunity. Of course she had, because that's what Mackenzie does. She's a connector. They were thrilled that she had reached out and extended her a stronger offer, 
which she enthusiastically accepted. Often we think the best way to be fulfilled is to keep climbing the corporate ladder higher and higher, but sometimes satisfaction comes from the lateral moves or the critical experiences. Mackenzie second-guessed her initial thought that success meant a promotion. It really meant getting a new critical experience in her career to live her values of influence and connection. In the last clip, you heard Mackenzie's story. She used her values to check in on a situation that was a big life decision. I love that she checked in with her values and used it as a filter or guidepost for such an important decision. And that is powerful. But I think what could be just as powerful, or maybe even more powerful, would be using it for lots of small decisions. By increasing the frequency of using our values in the small decisions, It may enable us to use it more readily or easily when the big decisions come our way. Remember, no frequency illusion here. I want you to intentionally use those core values in the everyday. So no matter how you move through the values first framework, I know it is worth it to audit time to see where and how your values are showing up. I cannot wait for you to use these tools in this section and see some of these happy surprises come up when your values are showing up. And to make sure you get your hands on all the tools from my book, go to thecatchgroup.com slash values first to download the workbook that accompanies the book. While you are there, grab the book club discussion guide to dig in further into the topics with your team or group inside or outside of work. Next week, we'll continue this podcast series with one of the most popular topics in the book the topic of life boundaries, building them, keeping them, and modeling boundaries. Until then, remember, your leadership belongs here. You belong in the C-suite. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. Editing and support for the podcast is done by S&E Podcast Management. To get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values, go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care.